talking about the difference between permutation versus combination. We've got eight paintings here. I think I drew eight. Did I draw eight or did I draw seven? I have seven. Let's draw an eighth painting. This is a small painting. So I have eight paintings. I'm going to choose eight. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to choose two of these paintings. So the big question is, before you determine whether it's permutation or combination is, what are you doing with these two paintings? If you're just choosing them to go home with you or to be given as a gift, then it's a combination. So as it stands, we can't determine if there is a difference, so you automatically choose combination. If instead I say one painting is going home to go on my wall, and one painting is going to go to be donated to the, um, I don't know, Delta Pi Kappa fraternity to be um, destroyed in, oh look, we have in a destroying the painting contest, then those two are very different things. They're not really in order because it might have been a, we end up choosing a really crappy painting and it goes and gets destroyed and so maybe that's a good thing and um, maybe the picture that I choose from home is really beautiful and so maybe that's the top one and this is a crappy one and so which is first which is second there's no way to tell the point is is that it's not about what order they're in it's about that they're doing different things so this would be a permutation compare that with what if we choose eight paintings from eight? Put an apostrophe there, paints, paintings. So as this stands, if this is a combination, well, how many different ways can I grab eight paintings and put them in my car and take them home? Well, there's only one. So if this is a combination, then the answer is one way. So if you see anything where you choose eight from eight or the one number from and it's the same number, this is usually always a permutation. Because if it wasn't, the answer would be one and that's kind of a dumb problem, especially in a textbook or even in real life. Go, well, how many ways can I choose three different cans of beans? from three different cans of beans. Well, there's one way. Take them and go check out already. I had to do a little movie magic there because I forgot the next thing that was really important for me to tell you. Oftentimes, a textbook or a question would be, um, will not have how many to choose from and then how many from which to choose. So you might see the question written as um, five people. How, how many ways can five people stand in line? So when you have a question like that, how many ways can five people stand in line? You don't have it clearly said we have five people and we're going to choose five. So look for this kind of thing. So if you only have one number, then it's usually saying how many ways can you put different people, five different people, you're choosing all five from those five. And this one is you're actually using order, but you know, you can say the first one is the best and the second one is sort of better and then the third one is a little better and so on. They're each doing different things. They're in a different spot in the line. So if you have only a single number, it's going to be a permutation.